Of course you should read to your children, right? I often meet families who come in, children who are having trouble learning to read, and I ask them what they're doing for some programming at home. And they often say that they just have been told to read a lot with their child, and maybe they're doing an online reading program. And reading with your child can be beneficial, you know, especially around some things like comprehension and maybe a family bond and some engagement with reading. But beyond about grade two, if the ultimate goal is to teach a child to read, it's not really going to be that effective. And the reason why is that uh, for a typical learner, they learn to read because their brains are pattern recognition machines. So our brain is, our, as children's brains are exposed to a lot of print over years, over time, the brain starts to recognize a lot of patterns and it starts to recognize a lot of probabilities and through statistical learning it starts to acquire those and then it also starts to recognize exceptions to patterns and then it memorizes those. So what does this look like? For instance, we tell kids that K says K but when we look at how K is represented as a sound in our spelling system, we see that the K sound is represented by a K less than 10% of the time. Uh, it's only about 13% actually, but 13% of the time. And um, much more often, about 73% of the time, the cuss sound is represented by C. But then the brain also wants to go and look and see what letters are accompanying C, because we know that if C is followed by an E or an I or a Y, like in the words centipede or cycle or cinch, it's much more likely that now that letter C is going to represent the sound. So we also see that the K sound can be represented by the letter CK about 6% of the time, but we also know that it only happens at the ends of words like rock or in the middle of words like bucket, but we can't have C and K happening at the start of words. Um, we also have some other spellings like CH and chiropractor and Q or QU and quiet. Now you probably knew that at some level. You know how to read and spell all of those words, but you likely didn't know or recognize those probabilities or those statistics. So what's happening here? Well, that's the difference between implicit learning and declarative learning. So implicitly, you know how to read all those words and you can recognize them and you can spell them, but you can't actually declare how it is that you know those things. So for kids who don't learn through statistical learning, exposure is not going to do it. Getting exposed to more and more reading and reading with their kids isn't going to help them acquire those statistics and patterns if they haven't got it by about grade two. They have to be explicitly taught. So that's where we come in. That's what we do in our therapy. We go in and we start to teach kids about these patterns, exceptions to these patterns, exceptions to the rules, how to recognize these rules, and uh, basically how to start representing the sounds and the words that they know into print. And uh, so if you want to slide over to the blog at speaktoread.ca, you can see a little bit more information about um, should you read to your children? Some of the benefits, as well as some of the strategies if you are going to read with your children, better yet have them read to you, some of the strategies to support them with that. So I hope to see you over there. Talk again soon. Bye-bye.